Welcome back to Xbox Corner, my name is Alex and today we got the latest announcement for games leaving Game Pass over this next month. Now all but one they will drop off come August the 16th, so we figured let's take a look at what's leaving and answer the question do you have enough time to beat them before you need to drop that cash. So without luck hit subscribe, join our growing Xbox family and let's get started. So in the top left corner of the screen you're going to see the platform it is currently on with Game Pass, a main story runtime and then also a completionist runtime. Now these are taken from howlongtobeat.com. That completionist time it should give you some sort of idea of how long you're looking at to get all achievements. I'll also then include any current discounts you can find for them on the Xbox Store as well. So first up Grand Theft Auto 5 and I'm not sure how much really needs to be said around this title. This is the second time it's actually been removed from the service and this time we actually had a window of three months to dive into the world of Los Santos. Incredible open world game though, the king of the genre let's face it and just a hell of a story as well as you follow three protagonists Michael, Franklin and Trevor. It's a game though that refuses to die quite honestly when you think it was released originally back on the PS3 and 360 in 2013 but they do continue to support it, they continue to update it, they've added a ton of online content as well from casinos to new cars to the recent Alice Car Meet. Quality game though and you can easily get hundreds of hours out of this one and while achievements wise it might be a bit of a stretch to get that done before it drops off, the story should be doable. This game though it desperately needs a sequel at this point and I just can't wait to see where they go next whenever that may be. Darksiders Genesis then took the series in a new direction, what was once a third person hack and slash action RPG changed things up and went with a top down viewpoint for its action RPG world, still very much retained what it was kind of known for with a ton of combat and kind of exploration. The easy comparison here just because of the way it looks is Diablo but it's not really that level, it's not all about you know loot, this is puzzles, combat exploration, even some minor platforming. While opinions on this one though they were mixed, I really enjoyed it, it's a prequel to the original title, it introduces a new horseman of the apocalypse in Strife, just a badass like dual gun welding like killer and yeah I wouldn't call it smart but it is a lot of fun and it's even better when played in co-op either offline or on. Its story then has a relatively reasonable runtime that should be achievable before it drops off. The classic then Final Fantasy 7, not the remake, this is the OG and I mean for many this will be the pinnacle of the series as the world is taken over by an organisation known here as the Shinra Electric Power Company. You will be playing as Cloud, once a member of the Shinra Soldier Unit but you are now a mercenary and you are leading a hand to the anti-Shinra rebel group known as Avalanche. One of the best turn based RPGs ever made with incredible depth, the world is stunning and the story just has so many highs and lows that it's hard to forget. And I played this like you know back in the day back at release. The only thing I will say if you've come this far 2021 and you've never played it I can't imagine you will be bothered all that much to see it leaving the service. If you do want to jump in though it wouldn't be unreasonable to at least get the story wrapped up. It also got a remake relatively recently as well which looks stunning and switched things out for an action RPG 5 that is well worth your time though it's not available on Game Pass. Next up then Don't Starve a Giant Edition, this is what I would call an indie gem, a survival experience. You'll play as Wilson, a scientist that's trapped in a world following what was sort of a demon attack, but you now need to explore, face off against you know the local wildlife, build up a home, manage inventory, all the typical kind of survival traits but with a visual style that will give it kind of that Tim Burton-esque vibe I guess. I wasn't actually sure on the visuals originally from screenshots but it really does work in motion. If you do decide to pick this one up then with that 20% discount above it actually includes as well an additional DLC that is known as Shipwrecked. It adds a new world with new biomes, creatures, seasons and if the name didn't give it away now you can craft a boat and set sail. Incredibly challenging game so and it's well worth checking out before it drops off but it's not a short one to overcome especially for you completionists. So the final Xbox game dropping off then is Train a Sim World 2020 and I can't say I've ever played this one but looking at it in this roundup of games dropping off I've actually ended up putting it on download right now more out of 
curiosity than anything else, but after loving Microsoft Flight Simulator's kind of brand of almost relaxation, maybe trains have been a love I've never known I needed. Let's roll though with the description from Xbox here, though it's an immersive first person simulator that uses real world data to bring to life the performance, sounds and power of real trains, featuring complete in-cab interactivity, feel the detail as you sit in the driver's seat or explore on foot, and not sure what it means by that, but yeah, bring back classic trains roaring to life. Now if you've played it, let us know in the comments if it's going to be worth a look. The base game's not on sale right now, but there's actually a fair few additions with extra DLC included that you will find discounted on the store. Aside from that then, PC users, you've got Ape Out that will be leaving. It's a genius title that everyone should play, and it's also super short, this one. You can wrap that story in probably a couple of hours, and you're basically an ape escaping some sort of facility by crushing everything and everyone in your path. The art style is incredible, though. The soundtrack, it's a masterpiece. It's like experimental jazz. I like that so much, I actually picked it up on vinyl, and yeah, absolutely just jump in while you can. Then you are also going to be losing Crossing Souls, another short one also from Devolver Digital, but it's 1986 California and you control a group of five kids that travel between dimensions on an adventure that's wrapped in kind of government conspiracy. Great pixel style though and it embraces that 80s style cartoon for its you know narrative and it's going to be for those of us that enjoy the classic adventures, think like you know the Goonies. It's an action adventure game though so expect some combat, puzzles, boss moments and then a whole lot of neon. And that's how we are currently looking for August. Now, will you be jumping into any of these to try and wrap them up before they do drop off? Or is this selection just not really the games for you? For me, it's Train World. It's the only one I haven't played. I can't imagine paying for it, so screw it. I'm going to get my train on now for the next few days. With that, though, like, hit subscribe, join our growing Xbox family, and I'll see you all on the next video. Thanks, everyone.